The other city, the main city of Ukraine that's currently under siege or about to be besieged is the capital city of Kyiv. And India today is Gaurav Savant and video journalist Pavan Kumar are the only team reporting from every conflict point inside and outside Kyiv, even as residents have fled this once bustling European metropolis. Citizen volunteers are putting up hedgehogs, those metal spikes that you can see, sandbags and blocks to try and slow, if not stop, the approaching Russian convoys. Take a look. You can see there are personnel around me. What you can also see is sandbags being put all over this place. Even as you and I speak, this is Kyiv bracing for an imminent air attack. Volunteers are coming forward, as you see in these images. Now, these are gunny bags filled with sand, and they are being stacked up one on top of the other. This is full of sand that's been brought into this area. And one after the other, this place is being st stacked up as Kyiv braces. Now, that attack, that aerial attack, whether it's missiles, rockets or air to ground attacks that can happen anytime. But just look all around me. Um, th there are there are soldiers inside. Uh, there are there is a shelter inside. This is a metro underground and all over now sandbags are being put. This just shows that any time that attack could happen. And we are showing you this area uh, as we walk across because this is the heart of the national capital uh, Kyiv in Ukraine. Now, as you look at Kyiv all around you, what do you see? Hedgehogs, barricades, barriers, soldiers and protection of the national capital. This is all that you see all around you and a lot of sandbags being brought in because now it is being said, you've, we've seen what's happening uh, around Kyiv. You're looking at what's happening in Kharkiv. They've seen what's happened in Kherson. The shoulders of Kyiv also being targeted. There have been a number of attacks and a series of attacks that have taken place um, in Irpin, not far from where we are. Uh, attacks have taken place in Chernihiv. Attacks have also been taking place in Ostumil. Air defense of Kyiv is systematically being targeted by the Russians. Now they will move into Kyiv. So all you notice all around is efforts to protect Kyiv from that imminent Russian air attack, air and missile attack. People actually have been asked now, those who are not a part of the effort to protect Kyiv, to move to safer areas. And a large number of people are moving to safer areas. They're going to the suburbs because it is hoped that suburbs will be safe. They're also moving to villages around, living with perfect strangers and yet contributing to the war effort. Whether it's making camouflage nets or it's uh, preparing Molotov cocktails or preparing bandages or, uh, you know, driving vehicles. They need a lot of drivers to drive vehicles for ambulances and to carry resources and supplies uh, to the soldiers because frontline now is no longer in Donbass uh, or in Odessa uh, or in the Sea of Azov. The front lines now are on the outskirts of Kiev. Uh, this is iron. It's a cross, uh, uh, you know, this is a barrier. Their aim is to block the advance of the Russian tanks and the Russian armored personal carriers. But it's not just these hedgehogs. And just look around. I mean, all over this place in multiple layers. This is layer one. Then those concrete boulders there. Uh, you see those concrete boulders here and you see concertina wire has also been brought in. Every day this level of security actually increases another grade. Like, look, this barbed wire, this concertina wire has also been brought in. This is actually the last line of defense. Yesterday we were reporting from the first line of defense, which is on the outskirts of Kyiv, where they have their ATGMs and their SAM systems, uh, the anti-tank guided missiles and the surface-to-air missiles and everything which is aimed to stop the Russian tanks at the entry of Kiev and that actually extends to quite a, quite a bit of a distance. We were at one such um, uh, point. This, in a way, is the last line of defense because if they come here, reaching the presidential palace uh, is, is, it won't be very difficult. But even that last ditch effort will even be made here. And again, this is in multiple layers. One layer of these iron blocks, then those concrete boulders, then the sandbags, then tires filled with sand, and then the next layer, and each protected by soldiers guarding these defenses because no defense is worth anything if it's not 
that obstacle is not manned to stop the advance of the Russians. Uh, similarly, uh, on top of some of these buildings, I'm not pointing in that direction uh, uh, specifically, uh, but on top of some of these buildings, when the Russians will move in with their tanks, they will have attack helicopters protecting their ground convoy and they may even have fighter jets protecting uh, that advance. So it's, it's a very systematic military operation that is mounted. The counter uh, to that is also, at least as of now, uh, as far as the Ukrainians tell us, equally effective in terms of steps they are taking. So their effort is to take down um, the aircraft, take down the helicopters. And just yesterday, they've released pictures of a, a Su-27 being shot down uh, by a surface-to-air missile uh, and the air defense system uh, operational. And of course, uh, using um, ATGMs to bring down tanks. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry claims in the past 10 days, today's day 11 of the war, in the past 10 days, they have brought down 88 fighter jets, attack helicopters and transport helicopters. And this, they say, is a huge loss for the Russian army. The Russian armed forces say that they have brought down more than 90 fighter jets, including many on ground. That's an air raid siren going up once again, which means which means an air attack is imminent. That's an air raid siren going up here uh, in Kiev. Uh, and this is the heart of Kiev. So if an air raid siren is going up here, it could point to perhaps an incoming hostile. It could be an aircraft that's coming in. It could be, uh, you know, a, a, a missile coming in. We do not know. But the air raid siren is just going off here in Kiev. But look at the soldier. He's still standing proud. He, he's not moving. You don't mind. You're not scared of the air raid siren. Okay. Strong, not scared of the air raid siren. The people are not scared of the air raid siren either. You're not scared of the air raid sirens, I notice. But uh, they are moving down uh, towards the bunker, uh, at least uh, for protection. Air raid siren going off uh, right in the heart of Kiev. Is this an indication that something could happen? We'll head down to the bunker uh, just briefly, as is the norm. Uh, uh, come, let me take you down. So the moment an air raid siren comes up, you're supposed to head to the nearest bunker. We are heading down for some time. We will be reporting from here for a bit uh, till the time there's more clarity on what the siren is. More often than not, uh, this, is, this is just an incoming siren. Blow, blares for some time, people move to safer areas, stick around there for a couple of hours and then they come back once again. Now another defining image through the Russian invasion of Ukraine right. has been common citizens and members of parliament picking up arms to actually stand guard for their country. Sviatoslav Yurash, the man you see on your screen with that Kalashnikov, is 26 years old. He's the youngest Ukrainian member of parliament. His image with the Kalashnikov walking around the streets of Kiev here on India Today have gone viral. India Today's foreign affairs editor Geeta Mohan is also on the streets of Kiev. She caught up with Sviatoslav for this exclusive report. Listen in to every word. You go frequently around. Okay. Okay. How many how many MPs have taken up the arms? I don't think it's exact number. On the first day, we got a chance to receive our weapons. It wasn't just me by far. There was a lot of different individuals who were colleagues of mine, male and female, getting their guns literally as I did, helping others to receive weapons to yeah, help defend the capital of that country. Okay. And uh, how do you see the game plan? Because are you disappointed that the West has not walked the talk? Uh, the West we are getting we are stalling this Down our arms, we aren't going to let Russia destroy our nation. We are going to fight 
the very end. Uh, the point is, I hope West will gain the conscience to support us in direct matters of love. But this is, <laughs> but the negotiations are not headed anywhere with Russia. What do you? I mean, you're that important to us, the Vesperia Zaus. Yeah. I was asked for journalists to be an actual partner. Uh huh. But the reality is that yesterday it was a green partner, that in corridor. Uh huh. And basically, the agreement was uh, reneged on by Russia when they shelled a civilian convoy coming out of our Uber. Uh, so the reality is, Russia is almost always the agreements. Okay. That's the me member of parliament, Stratoslav, who has become. Uh, 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 a real name, so to say, and a face of resistance here in Ukraine. Uh, you can see, as many other MPs, he's also picked up arms and he does the rounds across Ukraine, across Kyiv, in the outskirts as well. And uh, you go around just to ensure that if there is humanitarian aid that's required, that that's provided. The point is that. I have my members of parliamentary team that are heading the defense in the south of Kiev, heading the defense in the west of Kiev. I'll be traveling to one today, getting, uh, giving him some of the military equipment he needs. And then I think that with him I'll be traveling with Gwendari and I to one of the towns, which is very much strained by Russians. Empty streets. We are seeing empty streets everywhere we go. It's heartbreaking. And we know that there are so many who have left the country. Well, How do you see? Yes, yes. We tried, we walked down, we walked across from Poland to Ukraine. So we've seen the scenes of heartbreak. But do you see them come back and settle and reconstruct, yes. rebuild Ukraine? Absolutely. My country was much more solid. The First World War, the Second World War, through the Old War, suffered by hunger. My great grandfather went from Leningrad to liberate Europe. My great grandmother lived suffered by hunger. The more, and we ended up in that century with the expectation of 50 million people. So I think that this is my Stalin of practice. You think? Uh, can we just stop for a bit? You think? Uh... You think Russian forces, that the Ukrainian forces are enough to take on the Russian forces? Is it realistic? Nothing is enough to our country. So we're going to fight with everything we've got. If the West don't come uh, to your rescue, there is terror. Don't know us. Don't that. That's a member of parliament who's taken up arms, like many others, to defend his country. Oh, In Kiev, Gita Mohan for India Today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And the city that uh, Gita is reporting from is a city that could soon be under siege because only 22 kilometers to the west of where Gita brought you that report with Sviatoslav Yurash okay. is the city of Irpin. And this is what that looks like. 22 kilometers away from Gita, these are the images. Shells have been falling, constant aerial bombardment in one of the real front lines that's closest to the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. Rajesh Pavar is the only journalist this close to the what's unfolding in Irpin. And it is truly unsettling. A city that's been hit by relentless, relentless air attacks since yesterday. And there are also scenes that are unfolding in this city which are we would advise viewer discretion about. There were about 10 journalists in this area from six different countries, but Rajesh Pawar is the only one who's gotten closest to the battle lines. No media person in the entire world has been able to get closer to the battle lines so far with all precautions. This is something we want to tell our viewers because you're watching what's happening in Ukraine unfold with greater accuracy and greater uncontaminated clarity than anyone else. Here's Rajesh's report. It's, it's very close. It was just on top of us. Everybody on the ground. Everybody on the ground there. 
bomb very close to us has fell down. Everybody's on the ground. Everybody's on the ground here. And this very close, it's like just a few meters away. Everybody is on the ground running now. Continuous firing taking place. Continuous firing taking place. Continuous firing taking place. It's very close. It's very close and the bombing is coming closer to us. Everybody's running now to take place. The cars, whatever they have. Panic everywhere. Your militia and military is running. Everybody is running now. All vehicles leaving. Panic. It's, it's very close. It was just on top of us. Everybody on the ground. Everybody on the ground there. Bomb very close to us has fell down. Everybody is on the ground. Everybody is on the ground here. And this very close. It's like just a few meters away. Everybody is on the ground running now. Continuous firing taking place. Continuous firing taking place. Continuous firing taking place. It's very close. It's very close. And the bombing is coming closer to us. Everybody's running now to take place. The cars, whatever they have. Panic everywhere. Your militia and military is running. Everybody is running now. All vehicles leaving. Panic everywhere. Bombs falling very close. People fleeing. Here, this is the entrance to Irpin City. And that's on the blue board, if you can read it. That's, that's again, there's another blast and the firing is taking place just a kilometer away. And that's written Bucha District. That's written Bucha District. That's Bucha District and there we are. Smoke's just, this is where the it fell just now. You see a smoke rising just 50 meters from here. That's where the bomb fell right now. 50 meters from here, if you can see, that's where the, the, the round has hit, the rocket has hit right now. And there's still civilians. Mayhem in Ukraine. Moscow feels the heat. Designer stores to high street brands. And auto tech giants. Brands boycott Russia. Oligarchs lose their billions. World makes Russia pay. We're taking a very quick break. On the other side, we have a super broadcast from Kyiv. Four anchor reporters with their video journalists, all bringing you a joint broadcast from what on Kyiv. That's coming up next. Don't miss it. This is Frontline Reporting at its very best.